Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 22 of the processing tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do in this lesson is get the keyboard working. But before we do that, let's take a look at what we did in lesson 21. So lesson 21, we took all the code from lesson 20 and we integrated it back into our ant program. And so that was just this here, this, this move ant, this pop push and pop matrix, all of this stuff got modified just slightly in, in order to work with this image that we're drawing here. Uh, the only new thing we did in here was this heading method that's part of the p vector class and what this does is just tell us in radians the direction that our that our vector for our ant is heading in so for example if the ant is heading to the right and along the x-axis the radian is actually zero for that and if we were headed straight up the radians would be pi over two so we're usually we're used to dealing with degrees when we're talking about things rotating so like zero degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees but most of the time in, in math we deal with with radians and you, you probably should get used to that so if you don't really know what i'm talking about when i say radians then either go back to the last tutorial and see if you can figure that out or just check it out online uh, both ways will work uh, the only thing we did special here was add this plus pi 2, and that was just to make sure that this image gets drawn correctly. Because if I take this off, then the ants look like they're moving sideways. All right. uh, we also added in this nice background, and that was this green background here. And all the ants look like they're, they're doing pretty good. They're moving around. They go right up to the edge of the screen. And as I said before, not the, the greatest of, of artists or anything, so... We're not too too concerned with it but uh all right so let's go ahead and get started with the keyboard now i think earlier i did say i wasn't going to do animation or i wasn't thinking about doing animation but actually the next few lessons are going to build up to that so first we're going to do the keyboard and then we're going to get our character being animated and that means it's going to look like our character is running across the screen so why these ants are hover ants without any movement, the character actually won't be. And that is going to be more difficult, and it's going to take us probably three, maybe four lessons in total to do the keyboard and get the character moving around. And I want to take it slowly, as I have with all of these things, just because it is a, a somewhat difficult topic. Okay, uh, so let's get working on the keyboard first. Now, I could do it here, but just to make it a little more simple, I'm gonna start over in this side project. So go ahead and create a side project. I'm calling mine using the keyboard and just follow along with what, what I'm doing here. Okay, so if you remember back to when we used the mouse, uh, all we had to do was create a method and that method was a special method that was part of processing. And if you remember, it's called mouse pressed. We also had mouse wheel and a mouse move and things like that. Well, it's actually just that easy for your keyboard as well. So I have key pressed. All right, so key pressed is part of the event loop. And when you press the key down, it will register that a key has been pressed. So we can test that by actually printing out the key that we're currently pressing. And to do that, we use a special variable called key. Now, if you remember, there's other special variables that will show up with this pink color when you type them out, like mouse X and mouse Y, and key is also one of those. So if I run this, I get a window that's 600 by 600 that's drawing a black background. And now if I press the letter A, then A shows up down here. I press the letter B, B shows up. I press, the, I press 3, 3 shows up. I press a... Now this is odd here, I got a question mark and a pound sign. Now if I press the shift key, I will get a question mark. If I press space bar, I get a space. If I press enter, I get a blank line. So let me move this up a little bit so you can see more. And so really you can tell that key is just storing a single character. And you can think of it as this is a, a character variable and there is a type called character so i could do character a and that creates a character variable a and i could make b and i could initialize it to three so this means b the variable b stores a single character and notice for a single character we're using single quotes 
So unlike the string when we saw strings with the print line, when I do things like this, okay, this is saying make a string, these double quotes. This is for a character. All right, and, and now we are gonna use these. You're not gonna be creating any character variables, but we are gonna be using the character type in order to do some work in here. All right, so how can we use this in order to move something across the screen? All right, well, fair enough. First thing we need to do is actually have something to draw across the screen. So let's use int x and y, and I'm gonna make x equal to 300 and y equal to 300. And let's go ahead and put an ellipse in the middle of the screen. Yes, I know ellipses. We've done so many of them. It's getting really boring to see these white ellipses, but they're just so useful. So I've got this ellipse here in the middle of the screen, and we want to move it using this key press method. So how do I do that? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. You just make an if statement, and you say if the key is equal to and let's say A, let's go with the standard ASW or AAWSD, whatever, uh, for moving uh, characters around the screen. So I'm gonna say A and I want to go, if it's A, I wanna go left. So that means I'm going X equals X minus one because I'm going to the left on the X axis. Now remember, I can shorten this. I'm gonna shorten this in just a second. But anytime you're incrementing by a single value, you can just do this. Okay, so depending what you want, you can either do minus minus or you can do this. Now this is slightly more flexible because later I could come in and say, hey, I want, I want the guy to move faster. So I, I up the speed a little. All right, but for now we're just gonna use X minus minus. We're gonna keep it simple. And now we're gonna test it out. All right, so I, I, I press my A key and I hold it down. And I hold it down and you notice there goes my circle across the screen. All right, so not bad. So let's go ahead and uh, try to implement all of them. So let's get all of our keys working. I'm gonna put these in and hit Control T to straighten it up. If I'm going the opposite direction, I'm going in the D direction, which means I want X plus plus. If I'm going up, I want Y minus minus. Remember because going up is y in the negative direction, and s is going down, so that is y plus plus. All right, so it looks good. I've got all of all of these if statements. Now you notice they're all separate if statements. I didn't use an else if, and there's a reason for that. It's because I, I want to, or at least right now I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can do two key presses at the same time. So if I hold down A and W, It'll detect this one and subtract one from X and detect W and subtract one from Y. Now this is a, a mistake that many people make when using the key press method. When they first try to do this, they're, they're trying to do multi key press in here and you can't actually do it. And I'll show you what I mean by multi key press now. So say I'm going up and I take this, I'm holding the W button right now. And then I press A in order to go left. I'm still holding down the W button, so I should be going in the diagonal direction up here, but in fact, I'm not, I'm going left. That's because key pressed, when you press a button, it only can detect one key. Key is just a character variable. It can only store one character at a time. So it's gonna store the last key you pressed. And that leads to the problem of us not being able to do multiple key presses like this. All right, you're gonna notice an, another problem with this is that watch when I hold the button, I'm gonna press D and you're gonna see the circle on your screen, you should see it more clearly. You'll see the circle move a little bit and then it pauses and then it keeps going. So if I press D, pause and then keeps going. So there's a little a little one movement, it's just actually moving one pixel and then it, it stops and then goes. So why is there that, why is there that delay? Well, the delay is actually, it's, it's very important to have that delay because if you're trying to type something, say I'm typing a letter, then I'm typing like a full sentence as in a letter like writing to somebody. If there's no delay between that when it registers a key press and when it says, hey, you're holding the key down, then I have to either press the key really fast or every time I'm typing, it's gonna type multiple letters out for me. 
So that can cause a mistake. So for example, like if I press D, if there wasn't that pause, it might write the letter D on the screen. And if I didn't lift my key, my finger up fast enough, it would maybe print out two or three more Ds. And, and that's because a computer can recognize the key being pressed much faster than a human being can lift their key up or finger off of the key. So there's that delay in order to give the human response time enough time to move their finger off the key. Okay, so I, I hope that makes sense to you. So how can we fix these two issues? The one, the issue of the little delay when I'm pressing the keys, and second, not being able to press multiple keys at the same time to move the ball in a diagonal direction. Well, to fix that, we are going to actually use this type, a Boolean type. We've talked about Booleans, but we haven't created a type of Boolean before. So I'm gonna create one just called Boolean, and I'm going to call it, in a, it's gonna be an array, I'm gonna call it keys, and I'm gonna say equals new Boolean, and I'm gonna say 128. All right, so that's weird. I, I, I could understand why I might have an array because I wanna store many values, but why 128? Well, the 128 comes from something called ASCII. And ASCII is some, it's built in to every computer and it is these default keys that are expected to be part of the keyboard. And so all of these keys here are part of most keyboards out there and that this ASCII table is built into your computer and it says, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recognize these 128 different characters. So notice I have my characters, they're all single characters. Some of these are special characters, like things like shift and carriage return, which is enter, backspace, and there's a bell, and all these other things like this. And you, you can try to print these out if you want to look at them, but right now, we're just gonna recognize that all of these characters have a decimal number attached to them. And the decimal numbers max out at 127, and there's 128 of them because we include zero. That means if I wanna store all the different keys that can be pressed, I need an array that has 128 elements. Okay, so that's where, those, that's where the 128 comes from. So now let's use this knowledge to, to actually register the keys and save the keys that are pressed. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new method here. And this method is gonna be, I'm just gonna call it, uh, let's just call it move for now. And we'll, we'll come back and, and maybe change this a little bit later when we integrate it, but we'll keep it simple. I'm gonna take all of this code and I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna change this in a bit, but right now we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so how would I register if a key is pressed? Well, we've got this Boolean here. We wanna register it in here somehow. So to do that, we are going to do keys, and I'm gonna use this, the special keyword, the one that comes up pink, that's like mouse X and stuff, and I'm gonna say true. All right, so why does this work? I thought key was a character. Well, key is a character, but remember back to ASCII, key is also a decimal. So in fact, when I hit the letter A, it's gonna say, go to index 97 of this array and set that index 97 to true. Right now, all of these keys are set to false, which means nothing is moving. Uh, nothing, nothing is true, that means I wouldn't be able to detect any keys being pressed. But the minute I hit this, it goes to index 97 and says true. Now the cool thing is, is remember key detects the last key that was pressed. So let's say I hold down A, all right, so I'm holding down the A key, which means 90, index 97 has been set to true. Now I press the W key. Now I haven't let go of the A key, all right, so if I press the W key, now index 119 in this array is going to also be true. So that means I have now a Boolean array storing two different true values for the two keys. So that right there is a way that I can store multiple key presses because my, my whole array is gonna detect. If I press down every key on my keyboard that I could, a whole bunch of those, those these false values in this keys array would end up being true. 
All right. Well, how do you make that when I lift up the key, then what happens? Well, that's where key released comes in. If key pressed is true, then key released will set them back to false. So this says you press the key, you release the key and we're done. All right. So this actually does most of the work down here. We just need to up, up, update our information here based on our keys. So instead of detecting if this variable, this character key has been is equal to a, instead, I want to detect if index 97, where a is the index a is stored, is true or not. So I would say keys. And I would say a is equal to true. I'm going to fix this because equals true is we don't need that. But I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. All right. So what we have here then is this when I press the key a down, it says, look here, check if this index remember a is a character is also equal to 97. So it's index 97. Check if that index is true or not. If it's true, then subtract x minus minus or do subtract one from x. Alright, so the last thing I need to do is actually put that in here. I don't know why I have a capital there. Put that in here. So I call this before I draw. So it's going to call this and check. Hey, is he is any key being currently pressed? If it is, let's do the action. And I'll put these others in just a minute, but let's test for a. Okay, so there we go. Now you're going to notice something one, the movement seems much smoother. And that's good. Second, there is no lag at the start. There's no little little jerkiness at the start. Okay, so let's actually update all of these. And let's put D in here. And I'm going to do something different here than the first one. And you're probably saying, well, hey, why didn't he put equals true? Don't we need equals true in there? And sometimes you might, but most of the time you don't if you're dealing with a Boolean array. Because this Boolean array is already going to store values that are true or false. If this key D is pressed down, the value at here will be either true or false. If it's true, it's going to go ahead and add 1 to x. So I don't actually need this part. This part is irrelevant. Okay, so this is actually not, there's not very much code in here. I've just got this one method here. And if I wanted different keys, I could add them in here. And I just got my two key press key released. So let's see if it works. All right, so I go left, I go right. I can now press both keys and go up. I can go any direction I want. All right, so this is much nicer than we had before. It allows multiple key presses. It makes sure that uh, there's no jerkiness or lag at the start of moving. Okay, so as awesome as moving this white ball around the screen is, I actually want to turn it into a character and I'm going to do that using some basic animation and some a sprite sheet that I have found on the web at opengameart.org. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we'll get started with the animation, and in a few lessons, we'll have a character running around the screen. Hey, if you have questions about any of this, uh, please ask on the website or on the YouTube comment section. Thank you very much, and see you next lesson.